Well, hello everyone. I'm glad you could join us again. And hopefully you've had a good week and a good time with your table groups. I do want to challenge you because this is a great time while you're at home to really be working on those verses and uh, maybe make it a regular practice to set aside some time every day or maybe in the evening right before you go to bed to work on those verses. Because remember, this isn't about getting them checked off in your book and it's not about trying to get the awards, the jewels and the patches. This is really all about hiding God's word in your heart. And so I do want to challenge you with that, that you spend some time doing that each week. Well, we have a great lesson for tonight. And so let's start with a word of prayer and ask God to help us. And then we'll dive right into it. So let's pray. Father, thank you for another night where we can open your word and we can learn from it. And so, Lord, we know there's a lot of distractions when we're watching this on TV. So help us to be able to pay attention and to listen and to learn. And Lord, help us to be able to know how we can use this in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you remember, or if you watched uh, our lesson from last week, we are going to spend the first part of this year looking at the parables of Jesus. And just kind of as a reminder, really, that, that word parable, for some of you, you're thinking, oh, I know what that is, no big deal. Some of you are going, I can't remember what that means. So let me just help you. A parable really is a story or an illustration that somebody tells to try and show the importance of something. And so in our case, we're looking at the parables or the stories of Jesus. And I love it because throughout the New Testament and throughout the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus spends a lot of time telling the crowd or the Pharisees or people around him stories that show them how they should be living their lives. Last week, we looked at the wise man and the foolish man. And the wise man built his house on the rock, something foundational. And that way, when the storms came and the water came, it didn't fall. It stood uh, strong and it, and it was there. But the foolish man built his house in the sand. And then when the storms came, the house crumbles. And we talked about how the Jesus was trying to explain to people that the wise man is someone who hears God's word, but then also does it. And the foolish man is someone who hears God's word and then forgets all about it. And so Jesus was making that point. Tonight, we're going to be in Luke chapter 12. So those of you that have your Bible sitting on your laps, you can open up to Luke chapter 12. And we are going to be looking at the parable of a rich fool. Doesn't that sound exciting? It actually is a great story. And we're going to jump right into the story. And then remember, last week I explained it was always important to look at what's happening before the parable, before the story, and what happens after, because then we understand why Jesus told that story in the first place. So let's read the story, the parable first, and then we're going to figure out why Jesus told that. So Luke chapter 12, we are going to start in verse 16. And it says this, Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. In other words, very simply, he was like a farmer. He had all kinds of things planted. And that year, he grew more stuff in his garden than he'd ever grown before. There was a lot of it, and he didn't know what to do with all of it. I wish my garden did that. Yeah, I go out to my garden, and I'll pick a few things here or there, but it's not more than I can handle. So his garden or his uh, crop yielded plentifully, verse 17. And he thought to himself saying, hmm, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? That's a problem. He grew more stuff than he could even store or handle. Could you imagine that? If you grew so much vegetables in your garden, you couldn't even fit it in your refrigerator. Like that would be a lot. This guy did that. Then verse 18 says, so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and I will build greater ones. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. So take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. That sounds kind of cool, right? 
Like if you did a lot of work, what if you were working on school and you sat down in one week and you did the entire school year in one week and then you just sat back with nothing to do for the rest of the year? How cool does that sound? Let me tell you, you guys would be bored so fast. But this guy, he's patting himself on the back. Look how good I am. I grew all this stuff. Now I'm going to build big barns and store up all the stuff that I've grown. And then I don't have to do anything. I can just relax. But verse 20, listen to this. God said to him, you fool. This night, your soul will be required of you. And then whose will those things be which you have provided? You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying that God comes to the man and says, guess what? You're going to die tonight. And then what good is it that you spent all that time building those big barns, putting all of your crops and stuff in there to store up so you don't have to do any work for a long time? Because guess what? You're not even going to enjoy it because you're going to die tonight. And it ends with this. Now, remember, here's the point Jesus is making. He says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So here's a big question, boys and girls. Why was Jesus telling the story in the first place? I mean, it's a great story. Guy grows a bunch of stuff, builds big barns, says, wow, look how good I am. Look at all my stuff I have. This is great. I'm going to keep it all to myself. Then he dies. Well, there has to be a reason. We're going to go back now to the first part of this story to find out why Jesus was telling the story and who he was telling it to. And this is where we get to learn and figure out how we can apply this in our lives. So we're going to jump all the way back to verse 13, Luke 12, 13. If you have your Bibles, follow along. It says, Then one from the crowd said to Jesus, remember, when Jesus was going around, he had crowds following him everywhere. They wanted to hear his teaching. Now, remember also that some of the people were great and they really did want to learn from Jesus. Others were following Jesus because they wanted to catch him doing something wrong. In this case, though, this crowd wanted to hear. But this man comes out of the crowd after Jesus is done teaching and he says to Jesus, he calls him teacher. He says, teacher or rabbi, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. So let's kind of figure out what's going on. Man comes up to Jesus. Apparently somebody, maybe his father, we don't know exactly. It doesn't say, but we can kind of guess. His father has probably passed away, has died. And his father had some kind of wealth. So there's money or there's property or there's animals or something valuable. And this man obviously is not the oldest in his family. So he has an older brother. The older brother, his responsibility is to take what has been left, the inheritance, and to make sure that it's given to the rest of the family. But apparently in this case, his brother's not giving him anything. And this man is probably throwing a bit of a fit. He's mad because he wants his stuff. And so he goes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, you tell my brother he's supposed to give part of that to me because I deserve it. Wow. So what do you think Jesus is going to do? Do you think he's going to go to the brother and say, listen, let's be fair about this. How about if you go ahead and divide it up, make sure everybody gets their part and everybody's happy. But you know something? Jesus can see the attitude and the heart of the person who's talking to him. Jesus can see that this man just wants stuff. And he doesn't care that he's going to ruin his relationship with his brother. Or he doesn't care that he's putting Jesus on the spot. It's all about him. And what do you think he deserves? Have you ever been that way? Have you ever been in, in such a way where you think you deserve something? I can remember growing up one time. And I had been struggling obeying my mom and dad. More my mom. And, and that's not right, boys and girls. We know that because Jesus says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. In Ephesians chapter 6. But I wasn't doing that. And so my mom was trying to encourage me to be more uh, 
responsible. And so part of our problem was I didn't want to clean my room. I hated cleaning my room. I'm sure you guys all love cleaning your room, right? <laughs> probably not, but it's something we have to do. And so my mom set up a chart. I was probably about seven years old. My mom sets up a chart, and every day that I would clean my room and make sure everything was put away before I went to bed, I could go put a little sticker on it. Some of you guys may have done that. And when I would get down to a certain point, then I would get something. I don't know what it was, maybe an ice cream cone, or maybe I'd get to go to swimming at my friends or something. But I was really close. I think I was supposed to do it 10 days in a row. I had done nine days in a row, and then I forgot. And now, according to my agreement with my mom, I was supposed to start all over, but I got mad. And I got upset and I was like, but I deserve to do that. I did it for nine days. Do you know how hard that was for me to do? Nine days of keeping my room clean. I deserve to be able to go, whatever it was, get ice cream or go to my friend's house. And I got really upset. Guess what, boys and girls? I did not deserve that. And guess what? In this story, obviously Jesus knew this man did not deserve it either because here's what he said. Verse 14, he said to him, man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And then he said to them, take heed and beware, here's a big word, of covetousness. In other words, having this strong desire for something you can't have or doesn't belong to you. See, that inheritance did not belong to this man yet. And he wanted it so badly because he wanted his stuff. And Jesus said, beware of that attitude, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. And then he tells the story. So are you following this now? Jesus tells him the parable of the man who grew all those crops and wanted to keep it all for himself because why? Stuff was important to him. Now, it is okay to have nice things. There's nothing wrong with that. But when that is our focus, and when that takes all of our time and our thought and all of these things, that's wrong. You see, God should be the one that we think about. Think about this man for a minute. He grew all that extra food. He wasn't going to be able to use it. He had to build giant barns in order to store it all, but he wanted it all for himself. Think about this. That was a blessing from God. It was something God gave him as a gift. That man, if he were to follow what God wanted, should have taken the abundance or the extra of that food and shared it and been a blessing to somebody else. But he didn't do that. He wanted it all for himself. Listen to this. Count the number of times that man uses the word I, because this tells you how his attitude was. He said, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build greater ones. I will store all my crops and my goods and I will say to my soul six times. This man is not thinking about anybody else. He's only thinking about himself. And God said, when we do that, he said, that's wrong. Because verse 21, here's the point of the whole story Jesus said. He says, he who lays up treasure or belongings or things that are more important to you than God, treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. He says, you're like that man who died and had nothing. You see, boys and girls, it is okay to have things. But when we want something so bad that we don't consider, we don't think, think about anybody else but ourselves. God says, that's wrong. And that's why he did that. So what do we do with that, boys and girls? There's a couple of things. I think that it's important to always be thinking about other people around us. How can we share things? How can we do something nice for somebody and not just think about ourselves? Or maybe, here's a good one, how can we be a blessing, something special towards our parents? How can we do things like that that show our parents and demonstrate to God that we're not just thinking about ourselves, but we want to do the right thing 
and help others and share with others and do these types of things too. Boys and girls, this week, I want you to think about ways you can be a blessing. You can do something special for someone else, for your parents, for a brother or sister or a friend, maybe a grandparent, maybe somebody that you bump into at church if you're here on Sundays. Think of ways that you can do something nice for somebody else instead of thinking about just yourself. And then remember this story about this man who thought only about himself and then everything was taken away because he died and he never even got to enjoy it. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you for our story this morning, right out of Luke chapter 12. Thank you for showing us how we should be living our lives by the stories that Jesus has told. Lord, help us not to be like this rich man who was a fool, but Lord, help us to be boys and girls and men and women who want to be used by you, who want to serve other people and share and do nice things for other people and not just think about ourselves. So Lord, thank you for the story. Please bring it to mind this week in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we will look forward to seeing you next week for our third parable in this series. Bye, guys.